Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, it is time to finally talk about the Airbus A220. I think everyone should kinda know this plane already. I have already made a video about this one. Now, this plane, it was originally developed by Bombardier and now has the name Airbus A220 on it because Airbus and Bombardier had a partnership in order to, you know, boost the sales of this plane. And, well, what can I say? This is probably one of the most modern airliners that we have flying around today. I think this plane is even more modern than the 737 MAX, and that's gonna mean something. This plane was introduced in 2016 with Swiss Airlines. They replaced this plane with the Avros that they had before, and they still fly this plane today, of course. <laughs> now yes, from the outside, this plane kind of looks like a mix out of an Airbus A320 and an ERJ 190, I think which really does make a very, very modern look. Also in the cockpit, this plane looks amazing. Yeah, this plane, it hasn't been out for super long. The actual cockpit in here isn't very detailed, but still, this is obviously a very, very modern cockpit. You know, this is all glass. We have very, very nice LCD screens here. These are even touch screens down here as well. This is very amazing. But let's go ahead and take off. Now I've noticed the engines of this plane have some serious power as well. There we go. Which is why this plane can be used at very interesting airports like London City, which is an airport that an A320, for example, could not serve easily. But this plane is powerful enough to take off even on a short runway like London City. Now, let's go ahead and take off out of Nice Airport here too. This is in France, very nice airport as well. These are actually some pretty short runways as well, especially considering that you do see A380s operate here as well, but that's another story. Now, this plane, it flies very, very nicely. By the way, something I haven't mentioned yet is that this plane actually does have a side stick, which is actually a first timer for a Bombardier plane. I mean, now it's an Airbus, so that perfectly fits in as well. You know, you just can't have an Airbus with a side stick in it, right? So that definitely makes Makes sense. All right, meanwhile, we're just flying. But suddenly, our right engine dies. Oh no, we have lost our right engine. Yeah, what I just did was a very realistic simulation of real life. As you might already know, this plane is not perfect. It has quite an history of engine failures in mid-flight, which has been all around the news recently. So you should already have heard about it. Now, as I've already said, we have only lost our right engine, which is no problem at all. Every modern twin jet airliner can fly with only one engine. But let's just, you know, return back to Nice Airport. Everything is relaxed. Now, yes, over a couple of years, the A220 had around four to even five engine failures in mid-flight, which is not perfect. <laughs> yeah, the first incident was in August 2018 with Air Baltic. Obviously, no one was injured in that incident because obviously, again, a plane like this can fly on one engine without any issues. And the most recent case of an Airbus A220 having an engine failure was in February just this year from Air Baltic as well. They actually did lose their left engine again, which is definitely not perfect. Now, obviously, that's not because Air Baltic is a bad airline. They're actually pretty good, but it's also Korean Air that had an engine failure and Swiss International Airlines that had an engine failure. So something has got to be up to the plane and not the airlines, right? What is so wrong about the Pratt & Whitney engine? that this plane has. But first of all, let's go ahead and try landing this plane successfully. There we go, the airport of Nice is ahead. All right, time to land now. Again, this will be a perfectly safe operation. No one has actually ever been injured on an A220 flight, which is good. And let me just tell you, something like the 737 MAX has a way worse rating than that. Uh, yeah. All right, there you go. Oh, wow. Well, that was okay, I guess. Let's stop. All right. Now, obviously, there is the question, what is all about these engine failures? What is wrong about the A220 and its engines? Now, it is the software that is doing all the problems. And that was actually quite a nice landing as well. It is suspected that the engine control software was doing all the issues. I think it is now fixed. Honestly, I couldn't really find out anything about whether it's fixed or not now. It probably is, but whatever. This plane is probably still safer than the 737 MAX anyway. So that's all good. So yeah, this plane is definitely not perfect, but it is still a great plane. And yeah, despite its little problems and all of that, it is still very successful as well. There are around 600 or right now for this plane, which really doesn't sound bad. This plane is definitely not going to be a failure and it's going to stick around for a while. Now, 
Let's get this landed. That, oh, that was not a very smooth landing. But let's test the short landing capabilities of this plane. There we go. This was actually pretty good. That was a very, very quick stop. So this plane is definitely Swissager 1 approved. Now, right now, there have been around 100 of these planes produced. And they're flying for various airlines, mostly European, you know, like Swiss or Air Baltic. But there's also Delta Airlines using this plane and Air Canada and even some Asian airlines with uh, Korean Air. So that's all good. Yeah, I really like this one. One. And I'm hoping to get a better simulator model for this one as well. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.